So seconds out, delighted to be joined by Dennis McCann, the menace, itching to get back into action, I'm sure, August 15th. Has training been going? Yeah, very good, thank you, mate. But, but very good preparation now, so can't wait to go on, to be honest. I've been training for probably seven, seven months already, to be honest. Has it been quite frustrating? Because you had five fights in your first year in 2019, and you've only, this will only be your second now. You must be getting a bit itchy knuckles. Oh, definitely, mate. Honestly, definitely. I uh, it's kind of a bit much now to be honest. I've been training for seven weeks, seven months. Sorry, it's a long time. You know what I mean? So, uh, generally been training non-stop. So, I'm starting to feel a bit tired now. I just can't wait to get, 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 can't get on the scales and punch someone's head in. <laughs> it's good stuff. How long have you actually been back in the gym at the um, iBox? When did I leave iBox? That's what, that's what I'm saying. What's that? When did you, you what? You've been there through the, the whole period. Been training very hard, honestly, through the whole loss. What have you been restricted at all? Have you just been able to do what you normally do? Because I'm guessing you haven't been able to spar as much. No, 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 of course I've been restricted. Uh, it's been um, it's been quite frustrating, obviously, for for every boxer. But uh, thank God I got I had I got a gym outside as well myself, so I had a bit of access and that. You know what I mean? So it wasn't as bad for me than it was, as it was for others. Has it been a bit of a boost that you got married this year as well? So you've kind of got to spend more time at home and stuff, although you'd like to have been out more. To be honest, of course it is, yeah. It is, but not really. My boxing comes first, and so I would have been happy to be in the ring more, to be honest. Well, I'm sure your missus is grateful, <laughs> one way or the other. Definitely, um, definitely. Have you got an opponent yet for the 15th? I did have one, and one pulled out last night. I was supposed to fight Dylan McDonough from Ireland. Tough, like tough, never been stopped. Quite tough. I think he might have nine one six something like that. Uh, and he pulled out last night, so we're still looking for a opponent. We don't want no journeyman, so we just try for another opponent now, and hopefully he takes it. He's got a record of nine and eight, so nine one eight. <laughs> Everyone's talking about you, you know, outside of, say, the world champions. You're one of the most talked about fighters in Britain already, and you haven't had that many pro fights yet. Do you embrace that? Do you like it, or is it pressure? How do you react to it? No, of course, like it. it's more motivation for me to train harder, and, and uh, it gives me more confidence, you know what I mean? So I do like it, definitely. And, um, and you just got to show it now, show it now on August the 15th, and I got to show it what they're all talking about. Do you feel it yourself? Like when you're not online and you're not looking at people's comments on social media, when you're just out and about, do you feel the buzz around you? Do people come up to you? The people that you live with, like, get the impression that you're getting big? Yeah, yeah. Well, if I go somewhere, quite a few people come up to me. But, uh, like, fan, fans and stuff, which is very, very nice. You know what I mean? That's what all boxers dream of. And uh, it's quite nice to take pictures of your fans and stuff for people. It's good to have good people around you. you know what I mean, it gives you a bit of an extra boost and extra confidence. Are there people you've got in your own kind of circle that you can rely on when things start getting really big in terms of fame and money and everything else? Because you don't want to go off the rails like some other fighters have in the past. Uh, of course. Listen, I'm, 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 trust me, I'm a very clever 19-year-old. I, uh, I'm, I know I invest all my money anyway, you know what I mean? So everything I've made out of boxing, I've, I invested it straight away. So I'm quite clever around money. You know I mean, I've been working since I'm 10 years of age. Uh, I know I know all the tricks of the trade. Let's put it that way. My dad, what, my dad taught what, me well. What are you investing it in? Like businesses, property? Uh, watches. I'll invest in a house this year. Uh, um, that's about it, really. To be honest, property, watches, all that kind of stuff. And when you do, like you said, you're a very mature 19-year-old, you know all the tricks of the trade, but when you do need advice, who is it that you go to? Who are the people you trust to go to for guidance? My dad. Uh, I've got a few few close friends that's been my mates since I'm eight, nine years of age, you know what I mean? There's probably a circle of four, four, eight, my four mates I've have, I've got, and like the ones that, the ones I rely on the most and, and, and when things that get hard for me, I mean, they're always there for me. They're, they're the mates I have. And um, so I rely on a certain mates. I know some people that get fake friends and when you make it and that, but uh, I'm too clever for that, mate. I'm too clever for that. And and obviously, my dad, you, dad gave me, I was going to say, you me good advice. Yeah, yeah how, gave me very good advice. 
how much into the boxing is he? Like, how involved is he in your career? And, and how um, proud is he that you've got big in boxing already? Oh, he's very proud. He's, he loves boxing himself. He knows a lot about boxing. We watch our opponents together. Um, he does take a sit, a sit back. You don't have no, you don't get no involvement at all in my career. Because if, as you've seen yourself, a lot of dads get involved in the careers. It just goes pear shaped ninety yeah. percent of the time. So the trainer Al Smith and Eddie Lamb and Paul Taylor, they just they uh, they take they take take the front seat. And my dad just sits back, but he knows he knows his stuff. You know what I mean? If he, we watch opponents together, and obviously we we, uh, we discuss what we're gonna do. Aside from Al and Eddie, who are you closest to in the gym? Trainers wise or boxers? Boxers. Box. Uh, to be honest, I'm not just saying I'm quite. I'm very, I'm very close to like Sam Noakes and Henry Turner, and Michael Michael Burke. Really, that we've probably the most closest I am to. What What did you make of Henry's performance last week, and and did that kind of get you even more ready to go? Definitely, I, I thought he was quite well. To be honest, because. Including there's no fans and stuff. That Chris Alloway is, is a tough cookie, and he. You know what I mean, we all yeah. know, we all know about, about Chris. He's a tough, tough guy, and he. So, and he's very awkward. And I thought Henry executed a bit of a slow first round, but after that, there, I thought it just, uh, I thought it was a good clinical performance because it, there's no fans. It's hard to get the motivation. You know what I mean? To uh, get pumped up and the adrenaline, you got to, you got, you just got to make it happen yourself. When you're ready to start fighting for championships, I'm sure you'd be ready now. But when other people judge that you're ready to fight for championships. What weight do you think you're going to settle at? Bantam. Bantam. I'm gonna try, I'll try and make Bantam for as long you as You must still be growing, though. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously it's hard. It's always hard. It's never been easy for me, but I, uh, I'll, I'll make Bantam for a while. Hopefully, what, anyway. What do you make of the Bantam scene domestically at the moment? Who, who do you see as kind of the top guys? And, and how, either years or fights, how far away do you feel you are? I think top dogs in the division is... Uh, to be truthful, there's Liam McGregor and Cash Farouk. Yeah. Two very good fighters. And uh, even though I thought Cash Farouk just nicked, the, nicked that fight, uh, but I think they're very two, good, very close fight. One that's a very good fight. I've had a few, few top good fighters. Yeah, very good fighters. And uh, I think in 12 months from now, I'll be swiping them, them, them titles, to be honest. I'll be swiping them. Are there certain, fight, well. are there certain titles you want to win? Because obviously British and stuff is on the way to a world title anyway. But have you grown up dreaming about certain titles or certain occasions or anything like that? Only world titles. That's all I dream about, to be honest. Yeah. Listen, the British is nice to collect on the way now, but if I'm being honest with you, it don't mean, mean too much to me. But some fighters would dream of a British title and it's the biggest thing in the world for them, which is a very good title to win. And whoever, whoever did win it, fair pay to them because it's a very good title to win. But uh, world titles, that's all I'm in this game for. And if, uh, and if I couldn't believe I could win that, I wouldn't be in the game. I'd, I'd rather, doesn't matter how much money I can make, in British and all British scene, I carry on. Uh, I'd retire now if, if I didn't know I'd win a world title. Who did you look up to as a kid? Because you've been boxing from a very young age. Who, who did you like as a fighter when you were a kid? Uh, I watched Prince Azim. I, I liked him a lot. Uh, I, I, I like watching everyone with Valeria. I thought he was top, top class. Very good. I liked him an awful lot. And uh, I just, to be honest, just, I used to have Box Nation. I used to watch it all day long. I mean, I left school at 10, didn't I? So all day long, I just watched boxing fights, boxing fights all day. Have you met um, Naz yet? I know his son well, Adam, and, that, and uh, I ain't met Naz in, in person, but very, very, his son's a very nice bloke. I went for a run with him the other day down in Sheffield and went down to Spanish Charlie Edwards. And I met up with uh, Adam Mohammed. It was coming through on the on the pro scene as well. well. It should be coming through in the pro scene um, not too long. And he's um, he's yeah, he's, he's he's a good kid. Well, now you know him. Surely you're going to get an invite home to meet the parents at some point. So. Yeah, should do. Should do one day tonight. <laughs> what did you make of the sparring with Charlie Edwards? Obviously, that gives you a bit of a guide to where you're at because he's a recent world champion. Yeah, definitely good sparring. Too. That's very good sparring. Sparring, sparring, us. and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I thought it was very, it was a good span, very, very good rounds. Did you spar Sonny as well, or just Charlie? No, no, just Charlie, just Charlie. I imagine you and Sonny would have been one to watch as well with your styles. Yeah, definitely. I think it probably clashed there, wouldn't it? It'd be a good span that would. I, I, I asked for Sonny, but but he was obviously he ain't fighting the southpaw, so I understand that he can. Yeah, he's got but a sombra, hasn't he? Yeah, he's got a sombra, which is a good fight. That's, that's a good fight. 
Is this, do you think now, right, because you're fighting mostly journeymen, you said you don't want a journeyman for the next one, but so far it's been mostly journeymen. Do you think you're going to learn more inspiring now than you are in the ring at the moment? Of course, of course. But hopefully, if this next fight comes through, it should be a good one, hopefully. I'm fighting, I'm struggling to get opponents. I don't understand this. If I was had a record of 10 lost one or... Eight one six or or just something like that or or Southern Area champion even English champion, I'd be happy to get in BT Sports because they ain't getting the opportunities, are they? And probably get paid more money to fight me, even though they probably get worse to beat. <laughs> well, that's the thing, isn't it? You're a bantamweight, so you're in the lighter weight divisions, but you're still knocking people out, even though they're journeymen who are coming in heavier a lot of the time, and everyone's talking about you and kind of praising you and stuff. It must be tough to get opponents. I'm guessing journeymen don't always fancy it, and and. Fighters with ambition might want to avoid you. No, of course, yeah. Um, if you got to remember, even most of them kids are fighting, they're still three kilos heavier. I mean, they're all coming in overweight, though. Fat tubbies, isn't they? <laughs> but even that last kid, was, I think he was 2.9 kilos exactly overweight in that. And uh, a few kids have fought so far and have been overweight. And to be honest, it don't sound like a lot, but just to hold them extra little shots, them, that two, three kilos will help them an awful lot because they can bite down the gumption and just get through it, you know what I mean? My last fight, like, I could hear the kid whinging. You know, I, I was hitting body shots. Like, on the inside, he was whinging. Like, no one is bad here. But uh, they got through it, didn't they? But that's what it is. They're, they're putting on that extra weight to hold the shots so that they can, they can last a little bit longer because they've seen what you've been doing. Of course. Listen, the better opponent I fight, the better I fight. And it's been sparring. I've showed that sparring that as well. I, uh, I just can't wait, to be honest. Just get, hopefully, this, this next kid takes the fight. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be a very happy man. Need to get you in for a southern area or something. I don't know who the southern area yeah. champion is or if he's favourite. But... Ricky Little tried to fight him and uh, he said no, no way. He said we tried a couple of times. Uh, Matt Wendell said no. Uh, quite a few fires turned down, to be honest. I'll even take Tommy Frank now, to be honest. <laughs> I'd be happy to take him next. Have you any talk with him about it? I know there was talk of him and Sonny at one point, wasn't there? They ain't gonna take that fight, are they? They know what's good for them. This is fair pay to become Commonwealth champion, but good record in that. But they ain't gonna take the fight with me, which I wouldn't blame, to be honest. So, is it a case of like working your way up until you're nominated by the board, you're in a mandatory position to get these fights? Gonna have to, gonna have to, aren't I? Well, you can't blame for me, Frank, to be honest, because we ain't really tried for him, like, but we just know he won't take the fight because why would you want to go back to a, fight a kid 6 and 0? When he can, he's got a combo tight, he can go and probably fight for the British next. And I mean, you understand, you understand, and yeah, got to do his best for them, and yeah. What's your mentality when you're in the ring? Is it just to get the win? Is it to kind of destroy your opponent? Is there like aggression there, or is it more to entertain? What, what are you thinking when you're in there? I'm not just saying that, man. To be honest, I, I, I don't know why, but I always want to hurt someone. Yeah. I'm always in there to hurt someone. I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to draw blood, put it that way. <laughs> Which ain't a nice thing to say, but that's the truth. Yeah, it's not going to help you get opponents, but <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think it'll help you get more fans, but it won't help you get opponents. No, but it's good. So you have that sort of killer instinct, no matter who the opposition is. Of course, of course. Not 99% of the time, if I hurt them, they're, they're, they're getting put, uh, put that way. Do they I ever have understand. to, like your trainers and stuff, do they ever have to rein you in a little bit and just say, you know, calm down a little bit, stay more disciplined? Yeah, no, I'm not, not disciplined-wise. No, I'm very disciplined. I'm, I'm I'm very very disciplined. The trainer trying to rein me now for training uh, for training too much. Oh right. I train I train too I train too. Uh, he's telling me Dennis just he's off for two taps, and uh, I I go all guns blazing and I end up doing four. And he say he he come back. He said, "How much you do?" Or he say you're supposed to do two. He's done more in here. Or he says to me, "You done two? I say no, no. I've only done one. I'll say. But that's in the gym. So outside the gym, when they have not got their eyes on you, you're probably doing even more. I do, to be honest. I'm not going to lie, I do. <laughs> I've often trained, I've often ran, and I've, then I go and play tennis slowly. Like, no, no, one like, he goes mad. I'll play tennis for two, three hours, you know what I mean? So that's quite, you any good? That's quite intense. I'm a decent player, yeah. yeah. Decent. Is there anything you're not good at? What are you rubbish at? Um, You've got to be something. At. Let me think. Tidying up. Tidying up. <laughs> she said. <laughs> Is that your missus? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all men, though. That's not just you. Yeah. We're all menaces when it comes to tidying up. Blimey, well, I mean, yeah, definitely. Great stuff. Well, it's been a pleasure, as always, to talk to you. I'm really looking forward to watching the fight on the 15th. It's been too long since you've been in action. I think. Oh, a lot of people can't wait, mate. Honestly, cannot wait. I've been in camp so long, Dan, mate. It's just been ridiculous. <laughs> I'm not just saying it as well because it's on camera. I swear to God, I've been in camp. I must be trained. Since the day of lockdown, 
I must be trained not literally since then. I got married. I had a day after the next day. The next day, I, I was tra- I was trained. I trained the day of my wedding. Sparred, yeah. The morning of my wedding, really early in the morning, down Ibox. And from there, I would travel all the way down to High Wycombe early in the morning. So basically, I, I sparred on my, on, on my wedding day. And uh, then I had the next day off, you know what I mean? Because it, it was Sunday. Were you not concerned you might like turn up at your wedding day with a shiner or something? Danny, mate, listen, I, 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 I don't get hit, mate. Don't get hit. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. Brilliant. Is she going to get a belated honeymoon at any point? She definitely will, yeah. Hopefully, uh, probably Christmas. We'll probably have to do the honeymoon, to be honest. Yeah, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Nice Christmas. Hopefully, honeymoon. hopefully, I'm going on a second lockdown, but if, if, we, if we can, we want to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, lovely. I bet you'll be looking for sparring while you're there, though. You know, you know, then you know. Go to yeah. the yeah. I'm just nipping out to the Romanza gym for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> I can see how that's Come back to China or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Brilliant. Well, yeah. Look forward to the fifteenth, and um, hopefully we'll Thank have another chat after the fight. Definitely, Dan. Thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. Yeah. Good stuff, mate. Take care. Bye, Speak mate. soon. Bye-bye. See ya.